All right, uh, let's delve into that and some other issues with Kelvin Emanuel, the Chief Executive Officer of Dairy Hills Limited. And for a change, Kelvin is in Lagos. Hi, Kelvin. We always have to see you, you know, uh, from Abuja. But uh, how has Lagos been? Hectic. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is where the money is. So you can't get it easy. You have to hustle for it. So, I mean, that's the way we are here. Early morning is late night. Yes. yes. Well, it's, good. it's good to be here. Uh, good to have you here, yes. Kelvin. So, um, we finally saw the CBN governor in the house. Uh, a, a lot of us think that thought that uh, you know this wasn't going to happen, and uh, of course there was that threat of arrest and and things like that. But at the end of the day, uh, I guess his appearance has it made any difference to the situation? Because yesterday, I, I mean, somebody told me a POS told me to pay a thousand five hundred naira to withdraw ten thousand naira. So those are the issues on ground. Those are the realities that Nigerians are facing. Um, small businesses that need the little, little cash. Even transferring now, I guess the infrastructure is getting so much activity that using it now, there's so many uh, truncated uh, transactions at this time. Well, to be honest with you, um, I think the CBN is chasing shadows. There are important issues. It's like majoring on the minor. You have a situation where there are about 1.5 million um, POS terminals in Nigeria under the PTSP framework and the open banking framework. And currency hawking is actually illegal in the CBN Act. So him creating a black market for currency hawking shows you how irresponsible this whole process has been. Because there is nowhere in the world where you implement a NIA redesign to reissue new notes and you do it within 90 day cycle and you cause a frenzy that is actually a threat to national security. Also, if you notice that out of the 35 constitutional amendments that were sent in the fifth alteration to the constitution of Nigeria, to the president for assent that is not yet assented, that was ratified by two thirds of the state house of assemblies, one of those bills was on increasing the powers of legislative summons, which has been disregarded. And you notice that the Senate and the House has repeatedly invited the leadership of the Central Bank of Nigeria to come and explain to them why there is such a short period for this Naira redesign and um, reissue of new notes. They've also asked them, the Senate back in December asked the Central Bank to provide records on how ways and means were spent. That has not been provided until today. At the last sitting in January, the Senate adjourned until the 28th of February for the CBN to provide records. So for me, there are precedents that are negative for the future of uh, Nigeria, for the government of Nigeria. And one is the disregard of the National Assembly. So you don't think that uh, the conversations around uh, helping curb votes buying you know, is valid enough? There is or... nowhere in the CBN Act where vote buying, uh, fighting illegal uh, um, 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 violation of campaign finance laws is stated. That is covered in sections 86 to sections 93 of the 2022 Amendment of the Electoral Act. It's not within the purview of the Central Bank of Nigeria. The issue of fighting terrorism financing is covered in the act that establishes Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit for 2018. It's not the work of the governor of the Central Bank. The question, when, when this discussion comes up, the question I usually like to ask is, in 2016 or 2017, the state security agencies discovered a stash of 43 million USD in Koei, called the Koei Gate. The question I have for them is, how did they find it? Information. EFCC also discovered $9.8 million in the house of the former group manager. We have, whistle, we have the whistleblower's policy that could, that could have led to that. They, they have intelligence gathering. If you want to fight people who have hordes of cash in their house, why don't you deploy the, the, the wherewithal of the state security agents? Why is the CBN governor so concerned when he has inflation at 21.34% for core inflation? And the unofficial inflation numbers, in my opinion, are over 40%. The, this government is going to bequeath $171 billion in debt to whoever wins the elections next month, this uh, February. Why is he so concerned about chasing shadows? There are issues, more important and critical issues affecting the lives of Nigerians so on a what, daily basis. So what do you think is the way out now? Because we are in it. I mean, I, I, I don't think any 
average Nigerian hasn't felt this. Um, you, you, you have conversation with people, you don't have cash. They're now, queuing for PVC. I, I, for went, I went out yesterday uh, to the NGX, and right there, the ATM, everywhere is full. Everybody is filling it. How, from your perspective, can we get out of this? Because you go to the filling stations, you are, you, have, you are pressured from that area. You are being told to buy petrol 300, 400. If at all it's available, the attendants are asking you to also tip them when you finish. In fact, they're compelling you to tip them when you finish. You know, after paying such a high price, then you don't even have the cash. And then you want to transfer, do a transaction. You get hooked. Some of the apps are not even working at this time. You know, it's so much pressure for Nigerians at this time. How do you think this will affect the elections? People's mind, you know, when they are voting and preparing for the election, so much pressure. Yeah, well, you know, the chairman of INEC um, had a meeting with CSO, he's going to have a meeting with NNPC, and he's been complaining about it. Yes, he did complain you, yesterday. You know, but I, I think it's time for Nigerians to understand that we can't, the, the reality is that petrol prices will never be below 200 naira again. The government, the Nigerian government is broke. With or without subsidy? With, without subsidy and with subsidy because the government is struggling to pay the subsidy and they don't want to admit that they don't have money. The 3.6 trillion naira is somewhere around 15.5% of the 2022 budget. Number one, the government needs to admit to Nigerians that Nigerians do not consume 66 million liters of PMS daily. Number two, you have to phase out the removal of subsidy. Look, you have a situation where they can't pay, petrol is scarce, people are still wasting the precious time they should use in doing business to go queue for fuel. They need to phase out the room values. There are areas in Nigeria where people are buying PMS for eight, nine hundred naira per liter. And you're saying you're paying subsidy. Petroleum Equalization Fund does not provide for subsidy for the distribution and logistics of petrol from the depots in Calabar and mostly Lagos to different parts of Nigeria. So why are you creating difficulty for Nigerians and still say that you're paying subsidy from the post of the government when you don't have the money to pay? On the other hand, I, I absolutely believe, because Section 23 of the CBN Act says that the CBN cannot embark on narrow redesign and reissue without giving reasonable and sufficient notice to the public. It's illegal. And this situation has created a nightmare for Section 25 of the CBN Act that says that it's illegal for you to reject old Naira notes when the currency has not been outlawed. So, I honestly feel it's time to ease out the stress of Nigerians. Come back to them and say, this has been a mistake, and that you're going to give a six-month timeline within which you phase out the old mm -hmm. Naira notes, and supply the banks the new Naira notes, for Christ's sake. Well, it looks like the banks also have something to do with this, because as the CPN governor noted yesterday when he attended the, the meeting with the House, uh, we've seen videos of bulk of the new Narano being sprayed at parties, and as he noted, that couldn't have come from an ATM. It obviously came from a bank. So it looks like some banks are also cashing in on, on this uh, scarcity. The CBN has the power and wherewithal to sanction the banks and put them in line. But you have to supply them with liquidity. The truth is that the banks don't have enough liquidity. They don't have enough cash for the people. So this attempt, this backdoor attempt that the CBN is using to try to mop up the cash that was brought into the system through ways and means, violation of ways and means, is not working. Because most of your population, more than 50% of the Nigerian population are unbanked. Mm. Calvin, looks like we're going to uh, have this conversation in a long time. I don't, I, I don't know about the 30 days you're asking for. I know before we got the 10 days extension, it took a whole lot. A lot of voices had to come together 10 days. But The, the, the reality is that he's, <laughs> even after the 17th of February, he's going to have to extend it again. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see, Calvin Emmanuel. Thank you so much. It was good to have you in the studio. And like when we have to talk to you virtually from our Abuja studio. But thanks a lot for your time in thank the studio this morning. Me. All right. <laughs>